Today, we're going to look at the Luo Connecting Acupuncture Point and their effectiveness in clinical practice. Hi, I'm Clara. Welcome back to my channel. Let's do this. So today we're going to talk about all the collaterals and the connecting points that the collateral use. Now the 15 collateral. So the 15 collateral is the one we're going to talk about today. There are no 12. You see how it's like 12, 12, 12. They all correspond to the main meridian. But these ones, often it's called the 15 collateral. What's very interesting is in a lot of books, we're going to see 16 collaterals, but some books will say there are 15 collaterals. So what I love about Chinese medicine is that there's different school of thoughts for many parts of TCM. And just like if you remember, you know, warm disease versus cold disease, like the Shan Han Lun versus the Wen Bin Shui, it's my Chinese pronunciation, don't quote me on that, but the six stage versus the four levels, right? Some school of thoughts was thinking that all disease come from cold invasion and some thought all disease comes from heat invasion. So 16 or 15, I'm going to talk about all 16. And then if you've been taught 15, then just you know, a lot of school of thought will say there's 16 and not 15. Their function is to reinforce the internal and external related meridian. So first of all, they reinforce the yin-yang connection meridian, meaning the large intestine will reinforce the lung and the lung will reinforce the large intestine. So that's their first function. The collaterals carry yin qi. So yin as in nutritive qi. They carry nutritive qi because they are trying to buffer the space between the external part, which is the muscular and dermatome layer, and the internal part with all the deeper meridian layers. That's their function, to really connect the external with the internal, right? They help expel pathogens from the internal, pushing it out to the external. And then emotionally, they help expel, repress long-standing emotions that we haven't dealt with, that we carry, and not, we're not able to expel. So a lot of time when you use some of the Luo collateral or Luo connecting point, you're going to trigger sometimes for people to cry or let those emotions out. So they are very good at expelling because they're balancing the internal versus the external. Does that make sense, hopefully? So that's the function of the 15 or 16, depending which book you read, collateral. The Luo point is where the collateral starts, okay? So long seven is a luo connecting point. It's a luo point. The long collateral starts at long seven, okay? So it means that the luo point is where the collateral starts. And actually, what's really funny about long seven is that long seven is a point that's actually located, when you think about it, on the large intestine meridian. How about that? So it is the Luo point. It connects the lung to the large intestine and it is actually located on the large intestine meridian, not on the long meridian, right? Like long nine, long eight, but then seven is out of the way. It's more closer or in line with large intestine five. Interesting, right? So long seven is the Luo point that connects to the large intestine, right? And large intestine six is the Luo point that connects to the lung. So pairing them, as you can see, they're both on the wrist. Now, when you needle those, you don't have to needle both bilaterally on both sides. You can do long seven on one side, large intestine six on the opposite side. That way you don't have to overdo with too many needles. It works really well when you pair points that can really complement each other, okay? So large intestine six and long seven, why would we combine them, right? Both of them are great to expel pathogens. So if someone has an allergic reaction to whatever, the environment, food, and they start to have a lot of swelling, and sometimes the swelling can be obviously very an emergency and we have to go to hospital because we can't believe the throat is shutting down. That's a different story. Emergency is number one, right? But if someone is starting to have a bit of an allergic reaction and they're starting, their face starts to swell. I had a patient one time, her ear was swelling. Maybe your wrist, your hand, your finger starts to swell when you have an allergic reaction, but you're not 
hospital bound, right? That is not an emergency. Large intestine 6 will decrease the water or the, the swelling, the, the excess dampness that's accumulating, and long 7 will expel the pathogen. So between the two of them, they work really well for acute allergic reaction that creates swelling that affects the skin because that's the relationship, right? It's on the skin. It's the external level. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So that's easy. Pretty simple for those. So let's look at the next two, which I absolutely love, which is spleen 4 and stomach 40. So those two points together, spleen 4 and stomach 40, are going to complement each other very well two ways. So spleen 4, luo or connecting point, and stomach 40 first in balancing the digestive system, specifically when there is blood sugar imbalances. So for people that have tendency to have diabetes type 2, of course it's super important to address the eating and change the eating habit and try to heal the gut. But in the meantime, it's really good. I use that combination a lot during pregnancy to keep the levels of the blood sugar really good, specifically for women that have had history of gestational diabetes in previous pregnancy. It works super well. So I love to use them for that purpose. The second purpose that we can uh, use those two is to calm the mind. Remember we talk about the collateral are great to expel pathogen, but also to release emotions, right? So stomach 40 and spleen 4. Stomach 40 is one of the best points for anxiety, and spleen 4 is related to the Chong vessel, which is the sea of blood vessel, right? Because it is a Chong conferent point. So it's really good when someone feels really overwhelmed and is getting anxious. So stomach 40 with spleen 4 together is great for people that have been anxious for a long time, for many years. Do anxiety, they'll say, oh, I've had anxiety all my life. I get tools to manage it the best I can, but I, I have anxiety since I cannot remember, since being a child, right? So that's what we want to use them. If someone has had anxiety for a long time, those two pairs, very good in releasing the emotional aspect that is connected to the anxiety. Does that make sense? So it's pretty simple, right? But it's very powerful in clinical practice. I see that all the time. And let's look at the next pair. So this is an interesting pair. Heart 5 and small intestine 7. But what I think is interesting is sometimes it's hard to connect the two, the heart and the small intestine. Their connection is a little bit tougher to understand, right? Because the heart is all about the mind and the emotions while the small intestine is more about separating the clear from the turbid, it's in charge of fluid and, and separating the fluid and sending the turbid to the bladder and reutilizing the clear. So where's the connection there? Well, the connection is twofold. It's emotional with the physical, and it is separating the good from the bad or the right from the wrong. Right? Emotionally, when we can't see right from wrong because we're clouded, we're turbid mind, right? Separating the clear mind from the turbid mind, and we don't see the right from wrong. Those two points are great to balance that. So heart five and small intestine, sorry, small intestine seven are going to be useful. One for physical and mental. Remember that's the connection. If there are or there is cystitis, right? Interstitial cystitis, which is an inflammation of the urethra, which often is misdiagnosed with bladder infection or UTIs. And eventually after a few times, they realize, oh, it was not UTIs, it's cystitis, which sucks because then the person has taken a lot of antibiotics and depleted the immune system. So that kind of is not fun. But having said that, if it is cystitis, those two points together, small intestine 7 and heart 5, work really well for cystitis because women that have had chronic cystitis, yes, diet is super important, but the number one is those people that have had long-standing emotion issues, anxiety and insomnia. Most cystitis patients have had anxiety and insomnia which relates to the heart, right? See how heart five is used for stuttering and speech issue? 
This is for people that cannot voice what they want to say. They've stuck their emotions down and they're not voicing their emotions, right? And so that's a really good point to release those emotions that have been stuck for a while and address the small intestine seven for the issue that is the excess heat that is creating, showing in cystitis. Does that make sense? So those two points are great when there is physical aspect that is chronic inflammation but that is coming from an emotional, long-standing emotional issue. By the way, if you have patients with cystitis, it's really important that they avoid food high in oxalate, okay? Food that are high in oxalate, like spinach, like potatoes, are going to make it worse. Even though spinach is good for you, it's probably not gonna work very well for people that have cystitis. Okay, so now we'll get to kidney four being the lower connecting point and bladder 58. Kidney four and bladder 58. So of course the kidney and the bladder have a relationship where they reinforce each other specifically when it comes to eliminate water and you know the diuretic effect of water. So. Kidney 4 and bladder 58 are going to be very useful when there is kidney stone pain. It is not going to help in, you know, getting rid of the kidney stones. You still have to pass those. But kidney 4 and bladder 58 together when there's a lot of pain in the kidneys due to that radiates due to kidney stone, those are a great way to put them together for that perspective. That's the physical aspect. When it comes to the emotional aspect, which is really interesting, is looking at phobias. You know, the kidney and bladder are related to fear in Chinese medicine, and kidney four is a really good point for phobia. So you may have a phobia of spider, but there's not many spiders around you. Okay, no big deal. But what about if you have agoraphobia, you don't like to be around people, or you have phobia of small space and you can't take an elevator, or you have germ phobia, which right now would be heightened and be so, so, so difficult to deal with. When there are phobias, kidney four and bladder 58 are great to connect because phobias usually are long-standing. They've been there for a long time. So to release that phobia, this is a really good combination. So, Dix and San Jiao 5, you guys. Come on. PC6. Woo! Look at me doing this. And San Jiao 5. You've got to love San Jiao 5 and PC6. Okay. So here's the connection between the two, which I absolutely love, right? The connection between the two is PC6, first of all, they're right opposite. They're the only dual connecting point that are actually, you could put a needle through and come out, right? PC6, whoop, come out to San Jiao 5. Or San Jiao 5, come out to PC6. I wouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is that they are exactly opposite. So they're very much yin and yang opposite. They have a relationship. One's in the back. One's in the front, okay? PC6 is a commando point of the chest. San Jiao 5 is going to follow the San Jiao Meridian when it goes to the shoulder, right? right? And to the back and up, and then it goes up to the head. So what's interesting about San Jiao 5 and PC6 is the middle of the chest, front, PC6, back, San Jiao 5. This is a really good combination when people have a lot of tension and tightness, either or together. So in the chest and in the middle of the scapula at T5 area, right? Between the two scapula at T5, T6, T4, all that area of the chest in the back. This is the best combination when there is people that have a lot of anxiety, insomnia, and they're really tired. They're like, oh, I have this pain between my shoulder blade. It's just driving me nuts. That is San Jiao 5 that's going to release that with PC6 because it comes from anxiety. So when there's anxiety and insomnia with a lot of tension in the chest or between the shoulder blade at T5 area, this is the best combination. Again, it's physical and emotional, and you release both of those. Okay, let's look at liver five. I love liver five, not as a Lua connecting point per se, but I love liver five when there is a bladder infection after intercourse that often occurs with a lot of patients 
or external genitalia uh, outbreaks. It works so well. It's such a great, you know what liver fiber is to me? It's dandelion, dandelion tea or dandelion root, which is herbs, right? Pugon yin in Chinese. Dandelion is really great for the same purpose. So I always like to look at herbs and acupuncture points and their similarities. So for me in my head, liver five is the connection to dandelion. That's their connection. So that's how I see it. So, so liver five and gallbladder 37. I think well, liver five is more for external genitalia issue. And you know why? Because the collateral liver five starts where the collateral of the liver starts, right? It starts at liver five. Where does it go? It goes up and wraps around the external genitalia. That's why it's really good for any issue in that area. It's not interesting, right? So when you look at the collateral pathway, it will really tell you what's going on and how to utilize it. So when it comes to gallbladder 37 and liver five, they are, you know, liver and gallbladder are really good to move chi because that's their connection. They try to relax us, put us in a state of relaxation so we can go, oh, I feel good. Not like, oh, I'm so, so tense, right? So we want to make sure that we are relaxed. So those two points are great when there is a lot of tension in the breast area specifically. So breast tenderness for women at PMS, or if there is a lot of fibrocystic breast, right? If there's a lot of fibrocystic breast, those two together work quite well. Specifically when people are stressed and the breast tenderness is increased at PMS when there's a lot of stress, or the fibrocystic breast, the cyst in the breast are getting increased with the amount of stress. This is a very good combination for that. So we have REN15 and DU1. Right? I have done do one on many patients. It works really well specifically for hemorrhoids. REN15, using REN15 and do one, which are opposite yin yang meridian, right? Are going to be really good to, for to prevention, to prevention of epileptic attack. So do one and REN15 are great for epilepsy patients to try to prevent attacks. So to really balance the whole spine, because remember this is essence, right? Ren and Dew are connected to essence. So what we want to do is do those two points, try to balance the spine, the brain, the whole essence perspective when it comes to epileptic attack. So it's a preventative measure, which works quite well. So it's really cool to see because I don't have a lot of experience with it personally in my practice, but I know someone who does. The next two, are all about the spleen and stomach, the major lower connecting point of the spleen and the major lower connecting point of the stomach. So they have regular lower connecting point plus two major ones that are spleen and stomach because spleen and stomach are the earth element and they are at the center of everything. They are actually at the center of our being when you think about it between our head and our toes. Our digestive system is at the center of our health and it is at the center of our body. The gut-brain connection is not a myth. We are connected through our gut to our brain, our thinking, our thought. It's really important to eat a really good diet for the body to be full of energy, okay? So we said we have 15 or 16. In some books, you will, obviously all books are going to talk about the major dual point of the spleen, but some books may also talk about the major dual point of the stomach. But if you've never bought this book, this is where all that I'm, you've seen today, all the graphic I've used today, are located. They are in the PDF, which is right here, or the hard copy, which is right here. Uh, you can description or on my website, acuporacademy.com. This book has been so rewarding because so many people have come back and said it has really made a great impact in helping them understand, memorize, utilize all the acupuncture points. So this has been a really, really, really rewarding for me because it took a long time to make. There's 365 points in the body and I have over 800 page on the PDF, which is put onto the book. So it's quite, it was quite a feat to make, but I'm so, so proud of it. And I really appreciate everybody that has purchased it and invested in it and, and told me that it was very useful. So, so thank you for that, you guys. And by the way, if you haven't seen my second book, which should have been my first book, this is all on Chinese medicine diagnosis. 
And I think we forget, you know, people will ask, oh, what point do I use for this or for that? We always need to do a TCM diagnosis and follow that diagnosis. And I wanted to make a book that makes it easy to understand TCM diagnosis. So that's why I have this book as well. Let's finish off with the two major Luo collateral points. So the first one is Spleen 21. So Spleen 21, remember when we talked about the layers? So I'm going to go back to the layers and then we'll go back to Spleen 21. When we talked about the layers, we said that the collateral were here, right? We go from the deep to the surface, to the skin. And the next region is the 12 muscular regions. So the Spleen 21 is actually, and you know where it's located, right? It's on the sixth or seventh intercostal space in the midline on the lateral side, depending which one is more tender. So Spleen 21 is the connection of all the collateral or the inside, because remember collateral connect the external and internal, to the next layer, the surface layer, which is the muscular region. And the reason I'm repeating this is because Spleen 21 is the best point when there is muscular, chronic muscular pain, like fibromyalgia. This is why when there is fibromyalgia, you can do trigger points and put points or, you know, acupressure or acupuncture points in all the area where the pain is, but you have to do Spleen 21 because it acts like a spider web of all the muscular region. It wraps around all the muscular region and affects all the muscular region. So if there is really chronic muscle aches and pain, you have to do Spleen 21. It wouldn't work if it was acute, but it's very good for chronic. So even people that have arthritis, you know, it's in the joints, but it affects the muscle around the arthritis, you want to put Spleen 21 as well. So that's a really, really good point to add to the protocol when it comes to fibromyalgia. I love Spleen 21 for that perspective. And then there is the 16th one. So the major Luo connecting point of the stomach. So see how I put REN17 and stomach 18? So this collateral, again, is very short. All collaterals are very short. So this collateral goes and starts at REN17, and finishes at stomach 18. So it's a very short, on both sides, of course, but it's a very short collateral. As you can see, it's right on the chest area, right? This collateral starts at REN17 and stomach 18. So it's really connecting the heart and the lung, the heart and the lung, right? The gathering chi or the zong chi, Z-O-N-G, zong chi, is where our heart and lung chi is allowing us to breathe deeply and exhale, right? When we take a big deep breath and we exhale CO2, a lot of things happen. The heart is involved, right? With all the capillaries, the oxygen goes through the blood and the veins, and then we exhale CO2. It's all intricate together, and we don't even think. We take a big deep breath, we exhale, and it's like magic but it involves two upper jaw organs that are fantastic in allowing us to breathe better, to feel relaxed in the chest. So when do we use the stomach major luo collateral, which again is not just one point, it's two points on this one. It's very different. It's REN17 towards stomach 18. So what we want to do is we want to do both points, needle both the first one and the last one, when there is a lot of Shortness of breath with palpitation and chest pain, right? So for people that have lung and heart issue, it works really well to open the chest and allow both to connect. Does that make sense? So that's what we will use those two for. Woohoo! So we went through all the Lua connecting points. I went pretty fast, but I wanted to, you know, really look at the way we we use them in clinical practice because I love the Luo connecting point in the collateral. And I wanted to do the layers because I think that's also really important to understand how the meridian layers work so we can connect them when we use them in clinical practice as well. By the way, tons of more on my website. I know people ask me all the time, hey, do you have a protocol for high blood pressure? 
It's on my website. Do you have anything for headaches? It's on my website. So take the time to go on the resource page because all this is there. TCM Foundation diagnosis videos, acupuncture protocol, treatment, nutrition, like it's all there. Courses. I have also courses, free one and paid one. So you can really utilize the resource and I keep adding and adding. So make sure that you check that out if you haven't yet. And no matter what you do, keep rocking it using TCM and keep poking people, acupuncture, poking everybody. Bye guys.